jumping in here. Hope that everyone is doing well today. Um, so we got Eric Dorr with us, and I'm going to go ahead and just add him right in, and we'll get going here. Hey, there he is. Hey. What's going on? Uh, not much. I finally got it set up okay, it looks like. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I have these AirPods in. They don't seem to be working. All right, I'll just go without those. Um, <laughs> How's the audio? Yeah, I can, I can hear you just fine. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe for people watching, can you hear okay? We'll kind of jump in over here. Look, I got some people from Massachusetts, from Sweden. All right. Awesome. All right. So here, here's what's up. Uh, we've got over a hundred episodes of American Artifact now, and uh, we we're, we're constantly, you know, getting you know good comments and, and things like that. But there are a lot of questions that that seem to pop up uh, rather frequently. So uh, Eric had the idea of like, hey, why don't we just jump on a live and do a uh, little uh, addressing some of the the frequently asked questions. Um, and then also, it's like super difficult for me to catch all the comments. I feel really bad because, you know, stuff will just zip on by and I won't see it. So uh, a couple of days ago, I put it out to our supporters on Patreon uh, that we were going to be doing this. And uh, they, they submitted uh, some some questions. Uh, so, Eric, if it's cool with you, I think we may hit some of these questions from Patreon and then we may just bounce back and forth to some other things. If that's cool okay. with you. Yeah, I, I have a list of some of the the questions I get in the museum itself, you know, a lot of oh, okay. people watch the channel, come in the museum, they'll ask questions. And so I have a whole list here. So however you want to do it, if you want to go through the Patreon questions first, that's great. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so anyway, one of the, the first questions, and we maybe have addressed this at different times before, but maybe this would be a, another good time to kind of refresh for people who are new to the channel. Um, how, how did the, uh, the museum get started. Uh, what, what was the, the genesis of it? Well, when I was a, a kid, you know, uh, growing up near Gettysburg and being at my grandparents' house in Gettysburg all the time, I um, co started collecting Civil War artifacts because my grandfather gave me some of the ones from our um, ancestors' farm, you know, and, and that was Civil War artifacts. And then I started collecting World War II stuff. I had a lot of um, neighbors that were in World War II. My my one grandfather was in World War II. My other grandfather was in World War One. And so I, I started collecting other military items and other historic items. And I, I just, uh, I've always been a collector and I've always saved those items. And, um, you know, I, I just, I just, the um, collection just kept growing and growing. And at one point I started buying and selling and trading, you know, sometimes you trade things to get other things. And, um, I was about 20 years ago. I, I had a lot of my collection in my home and um, I was I was actually selling something to somebody. I think it was a it was a General Grant autograph that, that was fr framed up. And this guy was looking at my collection. He said, this is incredible. You have an amazing collection. You should actually you should open a museum. And I was like, ah, that's crazy. I, I mean, ha no, you can't just open a museum. But um, <laughs> anyway, I, I just, you know, at one point I got to to the to the point where I said, you know, I'd like to move back to Gettysburg. I, I, I was living out west for a few years. And, uh, you know, my, my ancestors or, or my grand, my grandfather's home was was still in our possession. And my, my mother was renting it out to people. And she said, well, I think I'm going to sell it. And I said, nah, don't sell it to somebody. I, I, I'd like to maintain it. So anyway, I moved back, opened up a museum and and just just did it, you know, and, and um, just bought some glass cases and went through the process of getting a business license in Gettysburg and go through all the ADA stuff that you have to do and an occupancy permit. And, and, you know, it just grew from there, you know, it's just the, the passion and, and the drive to get more artifacts has just made it mushroom into what it is now. And, you know, at this point, you know, we, we bought the building next door. This was number one on my list. Um, we bought a bigger building. Um, it's 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 about two and a half to three times the size of the current building. So we're going to use both buildings. And and one of the questions we get a lot because this is this has come out that I, I have actually bought a building. Um, a lot a lot a lot that has to do with the fact that I put a studio in the other building for our friends at Address in Gettysburg. So they say live from the Gettysburg Museum of History 
um, studios. So, you know, it's kind of gotten out before maybe it should have, because when I bought the building next door, I also bought tenants. And so I bought, I bought the building with a lease um, for the people who are in the front of the building. So that lease goes for a little while yet. So we can't really get in there fully um, until their lease is over. And, you know, they're, they're great tenants. I mean, they're, they're great people. And, um, you know, but once that lease is over, um, we're going we're gonna to get into the other building and start building the museum. We have a whole team of people who has jumped on board here. I, I'm really happy about how the channel especially has has really reached a whole different demographic um, from the normal person that's just coming into Gettysburg. It's going all over the world now. And also it's brought some other people on board who are just incredible. I mean, JD number one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it now. <laughs> JD is now fully on board with the Gettysburg Museum of History. He's not only a member of my board of directors, he's also part owner now. So he's going to be fully into this as our educational director. And um, when we build a new the, the new museum, you know, we, we, I've been very much influenced or inspired by our friends at the D-Day experience and also the uh, Adams County um, Historical Society Battle, Beyond the Battle um, Museum. I mean, they just did such a phenomenal job yeah. there. So we want to build something on that level, you know, where we can really interpret the artifacts that we have at the Gettysburg Museum of History a lot better you know, with, with more interpretation and video, you know, and have incorporate um, JD's idea. You know, we're, we're also bringing on board um, Jared Frederick, my my co-author on my, both my books. He's going to be involved to some degree. He's on my board. Um, his brother's a museum designer. We're hoping to bring him on board as, as the main designer. And uh, Andy Biggio, author of The Rifle, Marine veteran, um, you know, he's on our board. He's going to get involved. So, you know, I, I have these amazing people who are going to all come together and hopefully do something really, really cool with this collection. You know, and I'm real excited about it, you know, but it's just going to take time. So all you guys are coming in the museum saying, hey, when's the new museum opening? Just uh, be patient, please. We're, we're working all the time. And, and that's, that's another thing that happens. You know, a lot of people come in because of the channel and I may not be there because I may be on a phone meeting. I may be upstairs in our offices working. And, you know, I just apologize because when I first opened, I was pretty much always there. You know, if you came into the museum, I was there, I would greet you at the door, but the way it is now, we're just so busy with this other project. And plus yeah. some other things that we're going to get into in a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm just not always there. And I apologize for that. So if I can't meet you there that day, if I'm on the phone or something, I apologize for that, you know, and, but we have a great staff, you know, we had some people come on board. We have Becky, our manager, my partner, Cheryl, and um, we have another employee now that's, that's working at the front counter. So we, we have some really great people working for us. It's there, there's a lot that's going on. <laughs> yeah. I'll say and that was a long answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um uh... Yeah, def definitely a lot of exciting things. Anybody who uh, goes to the museum, you know, I'll, I'll get messages and things like that. And, and a lot of them are like Chief Brody in Jaws uh, when he's, you know, shoveling out the chum and, you know, the shark comes up and he looks at Quint and he says, we're, we're going to need a bigger boat. Uh, <laughs> that's what everybody says about the museum, uh, that, that there's so much cool stuff there. Um, and, and here's the thing, you, you all, well, it's just like with any museum. Uh, you, you see what's out on display. You don't even see what's, you know, back in the archives. Uh, right. So there's, you know, all, all kinds of, all kinds of cool stuff. And um, basically I, I used to change the exhibits around a lot more, um, probably about the last three or four years. I, when I totally ran out of space, mm -hmm. I, I've been basically archiving our new acquisitions. And I'll tell you, we have some amazing things that have not even been put out yet. So we're kind of yeah. saving that now for the for the new bigger museum. So I, you know, um, maybe if we have time, I'll give you a couple teasers on some of those items <laughs> at the end. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So here's a, another one uh, that Katie Myers asked, uh, asking how did the partnership develop? Uh, who reached out to whom first? And then noticed that uh, you made such a good team. Uh, I can maybe tackle the the first part of that. So we we have a mutual friend, and uh, basically, I every, I'd been going to Gettysburg and had put some videos out, and I had all kinds of people telling me, "Hey, man, you have got to go to Gettysburg Museum of History at some point." So so it was on my radar, 
uh, and then showed up at dinner and Eric happened to be there and, uh, you know, told him a little bit about the, the channel and, and stuff like that. And, uh, and he said, well, Hey, he said, why, why don't you come by tomorrow? You know, um, I'll let you in early. You can take a look around. And, uh, yeah, I went in was just like everybody else who goes there was completely floored, uh, by everything that, that I saw. And then I think, did, did we film the next day after that? I think we filmed that day. I, it, we, we may have filmed. I, I, I think, I think that morning you came in really early and, um, you said, Hey, you know, can we film? And then, and then, and then you said, I think we're going to need to do more than one video here. <laughs> so we ended up doing, I think four originally. Yeah. 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 So, uh, there, there was another question that somebody asked about, um, doing a walkthrough of the museum. If, if you go back to episodes 148, 49 and 150, or maybe it's 147 through 150. There, there, there's like three or four episodes right there. That that is basically a walkthrough of the museum. And and I got, you know, I got some flack uh, on those videos from some people who said, "Hey, you know, why didn't you spend more time looking at the artifacts and everything? Uh, you know, or we didn't get to see everything. You should have spent more time on this, that, or the other." The reason is, like, we we literally had about two hours to to film that, and at that point. You know, like like I said, we just met the day before. So I mean, it was it was my first time in there, and it was just kind of a running gun video. Um, yeah. And then later, I I told Eric, I'm like, dude, you you need a YouTube channel. Um, you know, showing some of this stuff. And then and then Eric said, well, hey, why don't why don't we just do something on your channel? So yeah, so that that's how the American Artifact series got started. Yeah, and, and JD offered to you know do some videos for me as an editor and. Um, and I was like, well, you know, if, if I start out with no followers or whatever, and I mean, I, you know, I have a pretty big social media following, especially on Facebook, but, um, you know, I just thought, why not just go onto his channel? I mean, you know, I didn't know if he'd want me to do that, but he was like, yeah, that would be great because, you know, I, I mean, he, he, he likes the content too. So I, it was, it, it just really worked out great. And, you know, then when we started doing some of the travel videos together, meaning when we would, we would film both artifact videos and history traveler videos together when we would go off into Germany or Normandy or whatever that that just really blew up because like yeah you've know, been going to Normandy and Europe for 11 12 years and I've really made some amazing connections there I mean I know a lot of people and uh, I, I my joke is I have better connections in Normandy than I do in Gettysburg <laughs> because it seems like everything's locked down in Gettysburg everything's controlled by the park service and you, you need permission from this guy and this guy and this guy to get on it <laughs> It's, it's a lot more difficult in Normandy. You just have to know the people and they're like, sure, go ahead and film, you know? Yeah. And, and so it seems like we do a lot better in Normandy than we do in <laughs> Gettysburg sometimes, but, um, Hey, it is what it is, you know, government <laughs> bureaucracy, I guess. <laughs> uh, here's one, somebody asking if they can get a signed copy of your books. Uh, yeah. If you just go to Gettysburg museum of history.com, they mm -hmm. have signed copies on there. Um, let me look at a few others here. Um, do you know what the oldest artifact in the museum is? Probably, the, probably my, probably the Egyptian mummy head. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's several thousand years old. So, yeah. Uh, here, here was somebody else saying that they like the world war two and civil war content. Um, what do you have much as far as revolutionary war stuff in the I museum? Really, I really don't have a lot of rev war stuff and, I really want to try to get some items. I know some people who have some items. And I think when we start um, doing laying out the new museum, what I what I basically want to do is have a timeline of American military history. So we're going to have to get some Rev War stuff. I do have some George Washington items, you know, which which will be our start. But yeah, you know, to get some, you know, some firearms and some other things from the Rev War. Um, I uh, it was funny. I was at a collector's show. Um, I guess it was two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. And, and I, I bought this really incredible Spanish American war campaign hat that has all kinds of things on it and stuff. And I don't have much Spanish American war either. I do have a couple significant pieces, but you know, I, I want to fill in some of those gaps as we develop the new museum display. All right. So you, you talked about just going to that show. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to these uh, Patreon questions here in just a moment. Uh, but so Another question that, that I get uh, often or, or that I see pop up is, 
could, could you maybe uh, just real quick kind of differentiate between the the museum, which is free to the public, and the artifact business? Um, so if, if somebody donates something to the museum, does it get sold? No, never. Um, unless they specifically tell us to sell it to raise money. So what we do when a donation comes in, we talk to the people. You know, first, you know, they ask us if we want it. Um, and if it's something that we want, of course, we'll say yes. And then we'll say that this is going to go in our museum collection. If it's something, say, for example, if somebody says, here's, here's a German helmet. And, you know, we already have 20 of the same helmet in our collection. We don't necessarily want that, but they're like, well, hey, we just want to get rid of it. And I said, well, do you care if we sell it? So we, we're always in constant communication with the person who's donating, donating it. And a lot of times in a case like that, I'll say, hey, would you just like to sell it? Because I'll just give you some money for it. And um, it, so it's on a case by case basis. But if someone donates something such as, you know, their grandfather's World War II jump jacket or something like that, and they donate it with the specific intention of it going in the museum, um, it'll go in the museum and it will never be sold. We don't sell stuff out the back door like a lot of museums do. You know, we do <laughs> sell things, but we're honest about it. Um, all 99% of the items we sell, maybe even higher than that, are items that we purchased from someone, be it a picker or another collector or a family wanting to get rid of stuff and we buy it specifically to sell it. You know, the items in the museum that are donated always stay in, in the museum if that person wants it to stay in the museum. And we're also honest about display. A lot of times people say, hey, um, we want to donate this to the museum, but we'd really like it to be or displayed. And if it's something that's significant and we really want that item to be displayed, we will tell them, yes, this is going to go on display. Um, but if it's something that may not be so significant or maybe something that's like archival material, like something like um, journals or things like that, I'll say, well, it's going to stay in the museum as a donation, but it may not be on display to the public, but it'll be in our, in our archives for access later when we open up our archives to the public. So that's kind of, I hope that explains it well enough, but <laughs> you know, our website, we do sell a lot of stuff. That's how I built the collection, buying and selling. That's how I bought, you know, built this amazing collection because, you know, I would buy instead of buying one or two of an item at a, at a collector show, I'd buy a whole bunch of them <laughs> with the intention of keeping a few items and selling the rest to make money to buy more items. And that's how the collection grew. So I, I started the collection by buying and selling. But like I said, you know, the, I see this on forums and stuff. Never donate to a museum because they sell it out the back. Well, in some cases, that may be true, but never with the Gettysburg Museum of History, unless we have your permission to do so. Right. And, and uh, I think what a lot of people are shocked with is that the when they go to the museum, they find out that it's free. Um, right. the, the reason that it's free is because of of this other business right. uh, with with buying and selling artifacts. So, so when you buy something from the museum, what you're doing is is you're contributing to the museum and helping it to, you know, stay open and stay, you know, free to the public. So, right. We have a museum charter that has all these, um, all these things written out. And, and it says in our museum charter, when I formed the museum, that w one of the principal things that we want to do is keep uh, history accessible for everyone. Yep. So I thought the best way to do that was to keep the museum free and to raise the funds by doing what I've always done, which is buying and selling military antiques. You know, so the museum is free. It's going to stay free as long as I can. Um, you know, the new building is going to be a big, big financial issue. But, um, you know, so far it's working. Um, we probably will at some point start raising some funds through our foundation um, to help build the museum and meaning the exhibits. And um, that's another thing we have. We do have a foundation. We're a 501c3 not-for-profit that's separate from the Military Antique website. And if you go to our website and you may not collect military antiques, but you want to support us, you can always go onto our website and go to the part that says foundation and you can make a tax deductible um, contribution and that will go 
only to educational parts of the museum. And that'll be making the interpretive part of the museum, meaning to make the storyboards and, and, and all that stuff in, in the new museum that's going to make this collection look a lot better and be a lot more, um, uh, you, you can learn a lot more instead of just having a bunch of artifacts in a case, um, which I love. But, you know, you, we have, we have it's, the, the collection's too, and I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but, but it's too important at this point to just have a bunch of stuff in a glass case with just yeah. a couple of bags. It needs to be um, properly interpreted. And, um, and, and that's really what, what we're trying to do. And uh, we will start fundraising at some point when we get closer to moving completely into the other building. And that will be all tax deductible. And that'll only go for that purpose um, as long as my board of directors, unless my board of directors changes that for something else. <laughs> That's that's what the the goal is, you know. Yeah. We really and and for those people who are now panicking to hear this, and they're saying, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, we love all the stuff in the case," you know, we love the old fashioned museum look. Don't worry, we're still going to have that kind of feel. Um, and I don't want to give too much away, but um, we're planning on building an exhibit, um, especially in the Civil War place. Uh, part of it that's that's based on an old GAR hall. GAR was the Grand Army of the Republic, and it was like a fraternal organization for veterans of the Civil War. And they were the first ones to have Civil War museums. And it's basically the stuff they brought home, you know, their hats, their their uniforms, their drums, their relics. They put them in glass cases and they exhibited them. And they would have meetings there and they'd have flags and all kinds of stuff so we, we want to have that kind of a feel so it will still have an old museum feel and even in the world war ii part although it'll be more of a lot better interpreted and everything we're still going to have one of those cases like in our hallway like the the relics of that stone you know that have like that kind of stuff so we you know, we want it, we really want the best of both worlds we want to make it so we can bring school groups through here and they can learn a lot more but we also want to have it so us old school collectors will go <laughs> look at all that stuff in that case you know so we're trying to do it all <laughs> uh yeah that's that's one thing that i liked about the museum the first time i went in there is it has this it has an old school vibe to it so yeah we're gonna we're gonna try and kind of marry you know the the old world with the new and uh, yeah definitely uh definitely exciting um here, here's one from uh kelly she, she was actually um, out during the, the anniversary. Um, what is one or maybe a few of the things that mean the most to you or that you have the, the most connection with? Well, I think JD knows the answer to this. That would be the stuff that my ancestors found on the yeah. battlefield. Yeah, I told told the story many times, I, even a couple times on on the History Underground and American Artifact about the pistol. It was a Colt Army revolver that was in my grandfather's den, and I would go and play with that when I was a kid. I would touch it, and he would let me hold it when I was six years old. And you know, to a six year old kid, that was the most fascinating thing in the world, thinking that a Civil War soldier had that gun. And um, I think that inspired me the most, and also the relics that were in his basement that was the, the items that were found on the family farm. I mean, those, those items are incredible. Um, they, they keep me inspired to this day. Um, you know, the major Dick winners collection is, is one of my favorites too, you know, like years ago, I just wanted something of major winners, whether it was a, you know, a, a, a an insignia or anything. And then all of a sudden I got a, big chunk of it and it was just unbelievable and then that snowballed into this whole easy company thing and and you know two books now jared and i are working on a third book you know that's based on major dick winner's photo albums that we have so um you know it's it's just really been inspiring but i but the the family relics from the the gettysburg farm are definitely the one for me awesome did you see that uh, you just said that about Dick Winters? Did you see that the Band of Brothers and uh, Pacific are on Netflix now? Oh, I've been watching it. Yeah, yeah, they just <laughs> added it, and it's yeah. amazing. So that's been what twenty for Band of Brothers twenty two years ago. Uh, right. They they brought it, you know, to to Netflix. I don't know how long it's going to be on there, and you know, after twenty two years, both of those series are in the top ten. Um, it's amazing for for Netflix. Yeah, I 
Cheryl and I used to watch Cheryl, my partner. We used to watch um, Band of Brothers quite a bit. You know, a lot of times when we were going on tours, like when we were going over there with Brad Freeman, who was the last Band of Brother veteran, we toured Europe with him twice. You know, we would watch it kind of as a refresher. And she said to me not too long ago, "Hey, we haven't watched Band of Brothers for well over a year." And I said, "Yeah, that's too long." <laughs> So, um, and, and I heard it was coming on Netflix and we have Netflix, so it makes it easy, you know, yeah. I mean, I on DVD or whatever, but when it's on Netflix, you just, you know, fire it up and there it goes. So we, we've actually been watching it the last week. I think we're on episode, uh, seven right now. <laughs> so I think I'm on episode seven of the Pacific. Um, but what's that? Uh, I said, I think I'm on episode seven of the, the Pacific right now. Um, that's yeah, yeah. gotta, gotta rewatch that too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one of the books, um, that I read when I was a kid, probably age inappropriate <laughs> was helmet for my pillow, you know? And, and I mean, that's, that was just such a great book. And, and I read that probably, I, I forget how old I was, yeah. but I was probably too young to be reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never read that book. I, I need to get it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's one that has slipped by me. Um, I'll tell you what, hey, while we're talking about Band of Brothers, um, you want to talk about We Happy Few 506? What's going on there? Yeah, sure. Um, so we we also partnered with We, we Happy Few 506, Matthew Leach. Um, we're doing some tours. Uh, JD and I are going to Germany in a few weeks, and we're, we're going to jump on their Birch's Garden tour. And um, there's also an Eindhoven tour. I may jump on that, but I, I don't think we'll be able to. So basically, we're doing some filming for both History Traveler and History Underground on that tour, but um, or after that tour, I'm sorry. So we'll be over there for, you know, a few days. And um, but um, yeah, it was it was cool because JD and I went on the uh, Normandy trip with Matthew Leach and and I, I've known Matthew Leach for years and, and I, I toured Europe with him, I guess, twice. Um, through another tour company and went the whole way through. So I, I've known him for a while. And um, I said to him, you know, hey, I'd like to start doing some tours, um, some big tours um, in 2019, I guess it was, or no, maybe it was 20. I was going to do a tour with Brad Freeman and I partnered with one of the local tour companies here to do that. And COVID, of course, um, uh, you know, ruined that. And um, that, that tour company ended up retiring basically after that, you know, a lot of tour it took a big hit on a lot of tour companies. And so I was kind of looking for another tour company to work with. So Matthew and I started talking and, you know, Matthew said, you know, their, their group wanted to, to get into the American market and everything. So yeah, we, we partnered and we're planning a big tour in the spring. We're going to um, plan a bunch of tours actually, but there'll be a, and, and, you know, we're still working out a few uh, of the fine details um, it turns out it's a little difficult doing a big tour with a UK company. So we're, we're trying to set up a U.S. office. So, they're, they're, you know, it, without getting too boring, um, <laughs> you know, it's just a couple more things we have to iron out. But I think Matthew Leach and myself and J.D. are going to do another one of these in maybe a week or two um, once we get things ironed out when we can give you real details about it. But it's been exciting. You know, here's another project. <laughs> Like I need something else to do right now, but, but no, it's, it's kind of like, I just thought it would be cool to do a tour together. And then, you know, it turned into this partnership and it turned out, you know, we really hit it off and, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's turned into something great. And, and of course, JD is going to be involved and um, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. You know, it's amazing all these opportunities that have been happening um, as a result of, of all the, all the stuff going on here. I mean, it, it's, it's just incredible. And, you know, the people we're meeting and the connections we're making and, you know, and, and, and really I got to thank the people who are watching right now, you know, you guys are amazing, you know, and you get all the, we have all these great comments and, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's really humbling to, um, know that, you know, your work is appreciated. You know, I, I mean, I, for years and years and years, you know, I just was sitting in the museum. I mean, I did some TV and you know, I did a bunch of TV shows on history channel, but, um, you know, the, the YouTube, the YouTube thing has been great because I, I, I love how we, we can control what we're doing. You know, when I used to do reality TV, 
you know, you had no control <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, they, they, you know, you weren't working with, with experts or anything. You were working with TV people. And I, I like working with historians, you know, we get to work with people like Paul Woodage and Tim Smith and all these like really amazing historians. It's, it's really incredible. <laughs> uh, somebody just asked if I could have ever imagined when I started the YouTube channel, if things would end up where they are now, as far as like being on the board and part owner of the museum, the answer is no. I, I had no <laughs> idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, when when Eric, uh, you know, basically um, made this this proposition to become part owner of the museum, um, uh, that was about a two or three week process for me to answer because I kept saying, I, "Let me make sure that." I understand what you were saying here. <laughs> it uh, took took a little while for it to, to sink in for me, um, but well, and, and we're we're more than happy to have JD on board. You know, he, he's a great person. You guys know that. I mean, you know, I see the comments, and you know, everybody knows JD knows he's a great person. And for for me to have somebody with me who I can trust, trust with the brand, trust with what's going to happen in the future, it's it it puts me at rest too, you know, to, to know that there's somebody with his kind of integrity, um, on board and, um, and he's well liked and, you know, it's, he's just a great guy and it's, it's, it's just been a really great partnership and I really greatly appreciate everything about it. So. Yeah, that's, it's, uh, yeah, likewise. Now, I've seen a few super chats come in and I'm, um, sorry that I haven't acknowledged those, but yeah, thank you for those of you who have, uh, who've thrown in, um, some, some super chats. Um, all right. Let me see if there was anything else here that I missed. Um, oh yes. Professor what? I just saw your comment there. Thank you for supporting on Patreon. And yeah, if you follow professor what on YouTube or uh, on TikTok, his stuff is great. Hey, professor what you need to, we, we need to get together and, and do some work together at some point. He, he looks like a fun guy to hang out with. Um, I think that was, Oh, uh, here, here's somebody asking about if we've ever had any issues with taking artifacts back to Europe um, or, or getting them back into the country. And the answer is no, we've we've not had any problems. Um, yeah, that, that was one of the things on my list of of uh, questions, because I've seen that come up a few times. Yeah. Um, security when traveling and, and stuff like that. So um, let me just address that. So we take a lot of security precautions with the artifacts. Basically, they don't leave my side. And we also have some electronic um, security in place. So, uh, you know, we, we do everything we can. I don't want to reveal too much yeah. because, you know, it's, um, you know, if you, tell, if you tell people what your security is, then they can find a way around it. But um, basically, um, we do everything we can. Some people say, well, you shouldn't take that out of a museum because, you know, it's what if something happened? I look at it like this. Um, you know, we are we are taking somewhat of a risk, but a, a, an artifact in a museum can be a risk, too. And the museum could get broken into. God forbid there could be a fire. Anything can happen. But I look at it like if you take an artifact out, if you if you do everything that you can to make sure it's safe and you film a video, there's potentially hundreds of thousands or maybe more people are going to get to see that artifact and are going to get to experience that artifact on the battlefield. And to me, it's worth the slight risk of taking it out of the glass case for a few days. Um, yeah. You know, you know. Um, not everybody can go to Europe to those battlefields. Not everybody can even get to Gettysburg, you know, to right. see the stuff at the museum. So here it is on film or on video and on 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 the battlefield. And and you know, we we've had we get ninety. <laughs> but I think the education aspect of and the amount of people that we can reach and and, and let them experience it through the video uh, um, outweighs the risk you know I, I really do and um, about um, some of the some of the other comments have been about you know taking um, uh, prohibited symbols back to those countries so 
you know, buying and selling this stuff for years and years and years, I've ex had experience with that before we ever started doing videos with them. Um, you know, I bought things out of Germany. I bought things out of Belgium. I bought things out of other countries. Um, and, and it is true that in some of the European countries, for instance, the, the swastika or some of the Nazi symbols are prohibited. You can't go around flashing swastikas in Germany or Austria or France. But what we do is while we're traveling, we cover them up temporarily, we put something, if it's a document, we'll put a piece of um, archival paper over it to cover that. That way, if we get stopped in customs and they pull it out, they're not pulling out a swastika on something. They're pulling out a piece of paper and it's covered. Yeah. It's not illegal to have those items in Germany or Austria or France. It's illegal to show the symbol. So as long as you have it covered up, you're okay. You know, when I when we took Dick Winter's um, smock over, um, it has a Luftwaffe eagle and there's a little swastika there. So we rigged up something for when we went through customs temporarily to make sure that was covered in case they would open up that um, garment bag that it was in. And that that um, garment was actually exhibited over at um, Dead Man's Corner d-day experience temporarily for a while and it was in europe when i got it and the guy who i got it from brought it over in a garment bag and he did the same thing and and the, the person that had it was a big military antique dealer and um he told me how how to do that with cloth and so that's what we do we make sure that everything is protected there's really no way um to to have a problem and it, for those for those of you who follow the channel and watch all the videos you know we we brought hitler silverware that was looted from the eagle's nest by american soldiers up to the eagle's nest now i you know that silverware has the ah and the eagle and it has a it has a swastika so i took a little piece of um uh archival tape and put it over tiny o over that swastika so when i brought it out at the eagle's nest i wasn't flashing a swastika it was covered you know and that's totally fine and we talked to the people who worked at the eagle's nest um and you know they i was afraid they might say well we don't really want you doing that up here they were fascinated by yeah it. They, they couldn't believe i had this stuff and they were they were calling their friends from out in the back to see the stuff so it was a yeah. positive thing it wasn't negative you know and, and 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 again those were items that had not been back to the eagle's nest for since the end since 1945 you know, yeah. and, and what, what a cool thing to do and to tell that story and bring it back to the spot. So, you know, there's a small risk, but, you know, we do everything we can to make that risk as minimum as, as possible. And, and I think I think most of you guys enjoy what we're doing with it. So we're going to keep doing it. Uh, it's, it's just like anything. There, there's a, a balance between the risk and the reward. And, you know, we, we do everything to minimize the the, the risk. Um, but, you know, like you said, a, a lot of the stuff, either people can't get to Gettysburg or there's been stuff that we've pulled out of the archives that don't display. I guess it is, is the D-Day diary from the engineer, is that on display or is that? It is. It is on display. Okay. Yeah. But, but again, but there are other things that yeah. diaries and things they're, they're hard to exhibit, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's in a case and it's yeah. there and we talk about it, but you know, it, the, the good stuff's on the inside, so it's really hard to display stuff. But it, it is out in, in the case. It is. I just saw another question asking uh, if we've done any trips with veterans back to that. That one specifically said France uh, earlier this year. Um, to answer that question real quick, um, myself and Eric and Andrew Biggio, um, who again, was the author of The Rifle and The Rifle 2. Um, there was a, a group of us that, that traveled back to Europe with four World War II veterans. Um, just an amazing trip. And um, you haven't seen that on the channel yet because I'm still in the process of putting it together. As a matter of fact, this trip that Eric and I are doing uh, is, is really to kind of gather content to go along with that. Uh, when, when you're traveling in a big group, uh, filming and doing what I do to gather content for the channel is almost impossible. Um, cause I, 
it, it takes a lot of time to, to put this stuff together. Uh, Eric can probably testify to how painful it is to travel with me uh, <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm filming this stuff. Um, and yeah, so for people who say that they would love to go with me while I'm filming this, no, you do not. Uh, it's the most boring <laughs> thing ever. Um, but, and we don't sleep and we don't eat. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so so anyway, to answer that question, uh, do I? Uh, I was just going to say the first two trips we did overseas, I think my partner, Cheryl, my girlfriend, um, traveled with us. And um, she says, you know, you, you and Jay, you can go off on your own now. You know, she she... <laughs> She likes to go there, but I mean, she's just kind of sitting around while we're like working 16 hour days or whatever. So it yeah. wasn't a real fun trip for her, you know, um, she just wanted to go the first couple of times, but the last couple of times she stayed home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. I love, I love what we're doing, but um, yeah, if you're wanting to go on a vacation, it's, it's not much of a vacation. Uh, but anyway, all, all that to say this um, here uh, probably, November, December timeframe, uh, we'll start rolling that content out. That's going to include some Hurt Can Forest material. I saw somebody asking about the Hurt Can Forest uh, a little bit ago, uh, and also uh, some some Battle of the Bulge stuff. So definitely excited to to get that rolled out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and are I, there I don't any think other the, questions? I don't think I have any more. Address or from. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at my, my notes here and, and seeing if, um, okay. okay. So, so, so there was, there was one where, you know, th there's a particular individual or two who, who write things on comments about some of the, uh, the artifacts being improperly sourced from family members and things like that. And I just want to address that real oh, quick. Sure. You know, I see those comments get erased cause it's totally not true, but you know, um, a lot, a lot of the items that we got, we got from collectors or we got from um, family members and, you know, they're all properly sourced. There's nothing stolen or improperly taken in the museum. You know, some guy that keeps writing these, these really ridiculous uh, comments. And, um, you know, we literally, okay, on my board of directors, we literally have a police officer on our board of directors. <laughs> fraud investigator for a major company. She's got a securities license. So if there was anything, you know, stolen or improperly sourced, believe me, they would be all up in there, you know? So it's, it's, everything is proper. Everything was properly sourced. And, you know, I don't know why there's this, you know, it's just absolutely not true, you know, and no family member of anybody from any of this stuff has ever, you know, said, Hey, that was improperly oh. taken. You know, mm -hmm. what happens is a lot of this stuff was sold a long, long, long yeah. time ago before it was worth anything, you know, and, and now it is. And now, you know, people say, oh, well, we shouldn't have sold that. So, you know, we want it back or something. But nobody's ever asked me for anything back. I mean, not with the items they're talking about. So well, um, that's that's definitely my, true. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's just comes with the territory of when you put yourself out there, especially on on YouTube. Um, yeah, th there's always going to be some yahoos <laughs> that are <laughs> that are going to say something. Um, right. But right. What I always try to keep in mind is like the vast majority of the con. I, like I, I have the stats that, you know, I can see for each video and almost every single video. It's, you know, like 99, 98, 99 percent positive. So, um, yeah. Um, but but anyway, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we can kind of clear that up though uh, just in case there's yeah any yeah. question and you know I, I used to really let negative reviews and negative comments <laughs> and they come in here and they complain about <laughs> you know bother me and and you know a few years ago I made a conscious decision to not let that bother me and I'll tell you, it's one of the greatest things around, you know, I, I mean, when you can let yeah. all that stuff go, you know, and, and, and really just not let it take up any, any time in your head or anything, it, it's really refreshing, you know, and, and I just look at it like, you know, those poor people that have to sit on the internet and write negative crap, you know, yeah. I feel sorry for them. I, and, and I'm the best. I really do. You know, it's like, 
if 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 that's what you have in in your life to for entertainment or whatever, I, it's 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 really sad. It's like I'm so busy, I don't even have time to look at them anymore. <laughs> I used to, it's like I don't even read them anymore. I just simply don't have time. But um, you know, and uh, you know, I guess, I guess my staff does that for me <laughs> yeah, now. They they can keep keep track of it. But no, it's 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 really it's really funny, you know some of the stuff that people say and, and, and how far out it is. Um, yeah. but, um, you know, another thing that I have on my list is, you know, I was going to maybe do a little bit of a tease. I, you know, I kind of already addressed the fact that we've been getting a lot of amazing items and just kind of putting them away and stuff, but I might give you a little tease of some things that may be coming our way here. You know, there happens to be a really amazing painting that we got from a certain um, Austrian corporal who was done, that was painted before he went to war. Um, it, an amazing, probably one of the best um, uh, Hitler paintings out there um, is, is now um, going to be exhibited here. Um, I, I, I thank the, the guy who put it on permanent loan. Um, uh, it, it's, it's really a spectacular piece. Um, and, uh, you know, we got some amazing civil war stuff. We got some headgear. Um, you know, I have just a couple things on here today. We just, we just got this railway Eagle that was from, from the, the German railway. Um, when they pulled all the Eagles off the trains, this, this American, um, captain who was in charge of the German railways during the occupation mailed one home and he mailed it home in a, in a box that fit this Eagle perfectly. And it has the D and the R in there for the, um, the German railway and it has his name on it and all these photographs. And that just showed up today. And that, that's just such an amazing piece. I can't wait to show it to JD. And these are things that we'll probably be making some videos on, of course, at, at some point, you know, he's got an amazing painted a two jacket. That's just really incredible um and one of the things i i might have told a few people about this for for years i've been trying to get one of the known hitler uniforms and um i finally uh pulled the trigger on that and we're in the process of of getting that and um to me you know like i i love uniforms i think they're the, the most um interesting items from world war ii at least and you know to have the the biggest one, I guess, is, is just incredible. And I, I can't wait to unveil that at some point. And I brought something with me. I could not bring something. Oh. <laughs> um, th this is something that's going to come out soon. Um, this is, I'm sorry, getting a lot of glare here. This is Herman Goering's wedding cup. And it has his seal here and his wife's here. But this was re-engraved. It was captured up at Herman Goering's train. Or I can't remember which. Um, but it says Europe, Normandy, Holland, um, Bastogne, Central Europe, and it's it's um, engraved with a name. And these were given to some of the top guys in the 101st Airborne, General. Um, um, so anyway, anyway, this is the one that was given to uh, General McCullough. So this is his cup, and we now have it. Now, some of you guys know about the Sink cups. Colonel Sink gave smaller versions made out of silver to all the 506 officers. We just got one of those as well. Um, but this one is the real good one. I, I mean, um, I think General Taylor has one, General McAuliffe, and a couple of the other, I think there's five or six of the top staff had these bigger ones. And uh, I think General Taylor's might be at the West Point Museum. I'm not sure about that. But to have General McAuliffe's <laughs> chalice from awesome. the World War II made out of the captured Goering wedding cups it's just amazing and, and a big shout out to my friend chris who who owns this piece who put it on loan and um you know uh, thank you so much for that um you know we're, we're getting so many cool items and and it's it's just incredible you know another great uniform it's, it's a lot of the baddies i guess i guess i need to i really need to get an eisenhower uniform you know i mean uh, <laughs> I, we also got saddam hussein's uniform we, we just got that so uh, we're gonna have that play too um but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have some really great uniforms. You know, we have Audie Murphy, we have Dick Winters, we have um, General Gavin. We we have some pretty incredible uniforms. And um, but if anybody knows where there's an Eisenhower uniform, I'd really like to get one of those. So I well, think they're all in the Eisenhower Library, pretty much. So that that ties in with a question that I just saw pop up. Um, it said, um, "How does one go about 
donating something to the museum, uh, just shoot an email. Honestly, is the easiest one to info at Gettysburg Museum of History dot com. And uh, yeah. and we'll get back to you. Yep. Yep. Just send an email. Um, Becky, our manager, will handle it. She'll show it to me. And then I'll say, you know, I'll tell her what if, if we want it or, uh, you know, we're very grateful for anybody even, you know, um, taking the time to do that. Another cool thing is, you know, we, we got a new phone at the museum. So now you can even text us photos to, to our old oh. number at 717-337-2035. So people can now text photographs directly to the museum line so that's really cool uh, sweet all right looking on my on my list here to make sure i didn't yeah i i guess i guess i did mention addressing gettysburg we have the studio i'm, I'm actually over in the other building right now that's where i'm shooting this in our temporary studio here and um i can hear matthew um upstairs from addressing Gettysburg. He's editing or something up there. I can hear him. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, we're happy to have him there too, you know, all these great partnerships and, you know, we're all helping each other out. And uh, it's, it's great to have him here. You know, we're, we're hoping some, some of the real Gettysburg nerds start getting more, you know, more involved here, you know, cause he, he has really reached an incredible audience. Of, yeah the super Gettysburg historians. I mean, every day, you know, I come in here to work sometimes at the studio and, you know, there's, there's some famous historian, you know, waiting to come in or coming down the steps or something. And it's, it's, it's real, it's really amazing. You know, the other day, um, I, I mean, it, you just never who you, and we have cameras everywhere. So, so a lot of times I get notifications when the door opens or something and I look and it's like, Oh wow. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's <laughs> you know, New York Times bestselling author or something. <laughs> we have these great historians coming in and out of here. It's very, very cool. Oh, awesome. Um, let's see, yeah, somebody... Just look for our, our live chat. I, I'm not exactly sure when we're going to do it, but, you know, we, we want to get Matthew Leach on here and talk about the tours. Um, we, we really, we, we really want to have it, um, you know, completely in place so we can start taking orders for the tour. Um, when we do it, um, hopefully that'll happen here soon. There's just, like I said, there's just a couple little things we have to iron out, but um, we want to do one of these with Matthew Leach and we can talk about the Banner Brothers tours and just real quick, you know, the one that we're doing, it's going to be, I think it's May 7th. We're going to start in England. We're going to go the whole way through on the footsteps of Banner Brothers. Um, Matthew Leach is going to be on it. We're going to have at least one other actor. We're still hoping JD jumps on for a little bit. If he can, um, cut out, you know, never say never. JD has another <laughs> engagement around that time, but I think he's going to be in the neighborhood. So maybe he'll come over and say hi to us for a while. So <laughs> J JD's a busy man. <laughs> so, <laughs> <He's true. laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to do my best to try and you know make something happen. If not on this one, then, you know, definitely on, on a future one. So, all right, cool. What did, did you have said, Eric, are you in the office? Often I'm traveling from Canada and then it went away and I didn't see the rest. <laughs> oh, oh, um, yeah. There was somebody asking about if we're that you'd like to see more Canadian World War One, World War Two videos. I got some World War One com content coming up, um, and yeah, definitely going to do some more Canadian stuff um, in, in the future. I'm I'm fascinated with uh, the Canadian story in, in World War One, World War Two. Um, okay. Does the museum there... have everything from the Battle of Britain? Yes, we, we have some um, relic um, aircraft stuff. Um, we have a one thing that comes to mind from that is that's really, really cool. And I don't have a lot of British items, period. But um, I have I have a suitcase from a little boy who lived in London who was a vacu or who was sent out to live with relatives out in, you know, in the country somewhere. And it has like some of his um, air raid protection stuff. It has a little miniature gas mask and it has some toys and it's like a little time capsule. And it was in another museum. It was probably sent to some museum at some point and it ended up in the collector's market. I, I bought it maybe 15 years ago because I just thought it was just such an amazing Interesting. time but that's that's in our archives, and hopefully in the new museum we'll bring it out. It's it's just it's just really interesting. It's kind of sad, you know. The, the the gas mask is like a little kid's gas mask. It's tiny. It's like, ugh. you know, to think that those kids had to go through that during the Battle of Britain. 
Interesting. You know? Well, now, now we have to travel to Britain and take that with us. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. Well, yeah, we're hitting about an hour in now. Um, was, was there anything else that you had? Um, yeah, I'm looking on my, my list here and I, you know, I, I, I think we pretty much covered most of it, you know? So. Yeah. But, you know, and, and again, I just want to say thanks to everybody who watches, you know, thanks for, you know, all your support and, and, you know, coming in the museum and all your kind words. And, and, and again, I apologize if I'm not there all the time anymore, you know, it, it's just Obviously, we got a lot going on with the new yeah. building, the studio, filming videos, Jared and I's third book, and you know, the, now a travel company. So th there's really a lot going on. As soon as I jump off here, I have I have a meeting with one of my attorneys for something. So it's it's just it's just great. And so I. Somebody who's there. Um, we'll take care of you and, um, you know, just, uh, sorry I, if, I, if I don't see you. <laughs> yeah. And Hey, uh, I'll, I'll just echo that. Um, man, as always appreciate all the support and all the kind words that the people have and, uh, for, you know, sharing out these videos and, uh, helping to keep some of this history alive and, and working with us to, uh, yeah, just, uh, flood YouTube with as much history as we can. Um, but yeah, you, you guys are, are awesome. So, all right, man. Well, I'll let you get to your meeting. I'm going to get back okay. to editing. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all on uh, next time around. All right. Okay. See you, man. Take care.